I'm Jessica Sowers, owner of Body Bliss Connection. I'm Jamie Marich. I'm a clinical trauma specialist, expressive arts therapist, author, and co-founder of Yoga Unchained. I am also the co-founder of Yoga Unchained. Warrior One, Vera Badrasana One. Standing from mountain posture. Again, mountain posture is the base for every standing posture. Let's take a nice deep inhale and exhale here. Transition the weight into the right foot and take a large step back with the left foot. As we step that left foot back, we want to be mindful of the direction in which the toes are facing. They're going to face at about a 45 degree angle, which is kind of towards about 10 or 11 o'clock if you were on, standing on the face of a clock. So from here, our core muscles are active, lengthening the spine, and we start to guide the hips to square towards the front edge of the mat. Bringing the hands to the hip is a great way to monitor this, to know if you're open or closing those hips towards the front of the mat, which is where we wanna be. Take a nice deep inhale, lengthen through the spine, and on the exhale, we'll bend deeply into that front knee. We want to ensure that the front knee is stacking over top of the ankle and angled or tracking over that second and third toe. So being mindful that the knee is not opening inward towards that big toe or outward towards the little toe, but staying tracked right over that second and third toe. And again, stacking over top of the ankle and not coming out in front towards the toes. On an inhale, let those arms sweep all the way up, reaching up towards the sky. Palms face each other. Arms are active, fingertips reach. And we pull the shoulders gently away from the ears. Take a deep inhale. And perhaps if our balance is on today, we look up in between the hands. Find that nice deep breath as we settle into this posture. Keeping that alignment in the body. On an exhale, let's bring the arms down, begin to press into the front foot, and step the back foot forward, coming back into our Tadasana, Mountain Pose. Nice deep breathing throughout every asana and their transitions. Let's begin to shift the weight into the left foot. Take a large step back with the right, and again, be mindful of those back toes. We want them at about a 45 degree angle, so on the left, with the right foot, the left leg forward, with that right foot, we're going to be angled at about 2 o'clock. <clears throat> and we square the hips towards the front edge of the mat again. On an exhale, we'll bend deeply into that front knee, stacking it directly over top of the ankle. Next inhale, we'll sweep those arms all the way up, engaging, reaching up tall, shoulders away from the ears. And perhaps we look up between those hands. Pressing down equally between both feet and again finding that connection of the three points on the feet. Pressing into the mounds under each big toe and little toe and the heels. Nice deep inhale. Arm modifications. You can switch those arms around coming into goddess arms or touchdown arms. You can also come to prayer pose. And also just reaching those arms down like mountain pose. Take a deep inhale. And on that exhale, press down into the front foot, step the back foot forward, mountain pose. Hmm. So Jamie, how does Warrior One feel in your body? Now I like it. When I first started my practice, I found the whole warrior sequence very challenging. Uh, what about you? Uh, yeah, it, it was a love-hate kind of thing. Feels good when it was done. I didn't like it <laughs> while I was doing it. But um, it's definitely given me some um, good focus internally, especially on paying attention to the cues that my body gives me. Uh, yeah, and I think also in talking about how it makes me feel, this is a pose where I, that alignment is so important because whenever I have not so great experiences in this, my feet hurt, I'm yelling to get out of it, it's usually because something isn't aligned. And even as you were instructing that, I felt my alignment really, I was really conscious of it. And as a result, really had a great experience in the post. Just very opening, very empowering. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about challenges. What are some of the mm -hmm. challenges you've seen students have with this? So there are a few challenges in this posture. One of the big challenges is that front knee. Mm. So many of us, we might have some good strength in our quad, but maybe the inner or the outer thigh is not so powerful, Not so doesn't have quite as much strength. So a lot of times when we come into that pose, you'll notice 
that that knee rotates in, and this can create injury in the kneecap. We definitely don't want to see that type of movement. Also, we don't want to see it go the other direction either because it puts too much strain on that ankle, and if right. you notice, the foot starts to rotate up. Mm -hmm. So we really want to make sure we have that connection, and that knee is tracking over the second and third toe. The other thing with this bend in the knee is that sometimes we come too far forward, which then puts too mm -hmm. much strain on the knee. Yeah. So if you're in the posture and you find that you have that extra movement to make in the knee, you step the foot forward. So you move that foot deeper, widen your base here, and then bend in a little deeper. Mm. But you wanna keep the knee stacked over top of the ankle and never out in front of the ankle. And when you say big step back with the back leg, how important is uh, the bigness? I don't think that's a <laughs> word, but that's what's processing in my head. Uh -huh. How big of a step does so, one really need to take? It's going to depend on a person's body and how they're feeling in the posture. So. In yoga, you really want to extend and really lengthen because you want to find the edge of the posture. So maybe three to three and a half feet. Mm -hmm. However, when you have someone who's just starting out who may have an injury, right. who's having a different experience in their body or today is different for their body, mm -hmm. you can step just a foot back. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to hinder the ability of the body or the benefit of the posture by narrowing the stance. Right. But you're going to invite your students to find the width of that step that's going to work best for them today. Sure. Uh, modifications. I like that you cued the arm modifications. Uh, I think that might have been something I did naturally uh, did. because I uh, I love goddess arms mm -hmm. on warrior. Um, sometimes it's because it's physically challenged to hold them and challenging to hold them in one place too long. But sometimes I just like the variation mm -hmm. of I feel a little bit more of a shoulder opening here, or but it's not as hard on my shoulders often as, mm -hmm. as doing it this way. Or if I'm in more of a place where I want to center into the intention, I may do prayer hands. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, let's talk other modifications. So some of the other modifications that we can think about for our warrior posture is the width of our stance. Mm. So we can always narrow that stance or widen it because sometimes mm -hmm. that makes it easier in people's bodies. Also the bend in that front knee. The goal, if we have a goal for yoga, is to really challenge our bodies and really try to create a nice 90 degree angle in that front knee. However, that's not always optimal, nor are we built up to that. Right. So it takes a long time to get to that point. So lessening the bend in that front knee can also be a modification in that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And let's talk about use of the chair. Chair is a great option for um, Warrior One. I happen to have one here. Yay! Um, so when we do our chair posture of warrior one, it's, it can definitely be a benefit. It's good for those who have balance issues again, mm -hmm. or may have some injury in their body that makes warrior one a challenge for them. So one of the ways that you can do warrior one in a chair is to sit on the very edge of that chair. So you can feel your sits bones connecting into the very front edge of that chair and your posture is just like you would be standing. We can take our left foot to start with. I'm gonna open it out to the side and make sure that my toes point forward. So this is the foot that's towards the front edge of your mat. Got it. The other thing then is we're going to step that back leg back, angle the foot just like we would on the mat, mm. and then we'll start to square the hips up. So now just the corner, just my left hip is remaining on the corner of the chair. And I can realign my foot and press down into that back foot and sweep the arms up just as we would in a standing warrior too. So you wanna be mindful that back knee might have a little more bend into it mm -hmm. here in the chair because it can be challenging to press nice and long, but this is definitely an option with the core and the bend in that front knee to start building this muscle memory and to get the strength up and the balance up to complete this posture standing. Sure, very nice. The chair is so useful. It such really a, is. Such a useful <laughs> yoga prop. So from a clinical perspective, I have had a lot of clients develop a nice relationship with this posture for things like assertiveness, tapping into that inner sense of warrior, especially when they find mm -hmm. out that this, this pose is called warrior. As we teach throughout a lot of our sharing and, and facilitation, Length of time spent in the pose is also variable. So for somebody who is new to a yoga practice, this will feel torture. If you ask mm -hmm. them to stay in it for even 30 seconds could feel too, yeah. too long. So small graduated doses. Right. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest challenges I've seen people have with this, that they strain it when they try, try it too long. Mm -hmm. The other thing also to note, the reason we demoed it on both sides, 
it may feel different on one side than yes. the other. So do you have anything you want to share about yes. that? Our body is very interesting. It's actually a magnificent thing, but each side of our body is different. Mm -hmm. One side could be stronger than the other. One side can be more flexible than the other. Um, so it is going to be different for most of us on each side of our body. Right. So as long as we know that, and are aware of that, it can really help with our the, the thoughts that our brain has is, well, I could do it on the right side, why can't my left leg do that? It's to really start to let that go and know that we're different and unique in each side of our body. So important that it's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh yeah, no. Because I feel a lot of people feel like, oh, I feel yoga. There's no <laughs> such thing. Yeah. No, no such thing. Thanks for joining us for Warrior. Thank you.